So if we start off with the, the input impedance, sorry, I should just mention that like all of these terms are uh, complex. Okay, so we're dealing with with uh, magnitudes and angles of complex numbers here. So if we start off with with our equation for the for the input impedance, and then we take our expression for the reflection coefficient and we plug it, oops, and we plug it in, um, and we do a little bit of manipulation. So we end up in this situation. So we want to uh, see what we can do with these um, these propagation constant terms here. So one simplification. I said um, is that we're going to assume that our transmission lines are lossless. So hopefully you see here, you know, the effect of setting the resistance and the conductance to zero, and the effect that it has on the propagation constant. I mentioned the propagation constant. The propagation constant is related to speed and wavelength. So this is where it's starting to show up, and um, this square root of LC here. If you recall, that's why I went through the uh, agony of deriving the uh, the wave equation in in where I included the, uh, the variation in time um, because we said that the phase velocity was equal to 1 over the square root of LC and that's where it shows up. So therefore we see that the propagation constant is going to equal J omega, so I'll, I'll write it as 2 pi F over uh, the propagation constant. Okay, so this is important. Uh, it shows up quite a bit. So let's just continue here. So if we if we plug in the value for the uh, propagation constant into the equation that we have up at the top of the page here, you know, we end up with this. Hopefully you remember from Euler, uh, for example, that the cosine of an angle is... So we make that substitution uh, to go from here to here, and then um, for sine... So we end up with this expression, and then when we divide through by, by cosine, divide the top and bottom by cosine, we end up with this... Uh, tangent here, it's a tangent term. So what does this tell us? Um, it tells us that at a given frequency, the load impedance gets transformed as you move along a transmission line, okay? So this is a function of position. So like I said, at a given frequency, if we have a transmission line connected to some kind of load and we define you know, our coordinate system like this, let's say, then at Z1, we're gonna have one impedance, and then at another position, say, C2, we're going to have a different impedance, and they may not be equal to each other. We can see here that um, the tan function you know, looks something like this, so let's say this is tan of x. It repeats itself every pi here, okay, so and this would be negative pi. So there is some period, periodicity, periodicity to this function, um, so that's why I say that they may not be equal to each other. Um, depends on how far apart these two measurements are. The whole point of this slide is to just show how the how the tan function here is written like this. So we said that if tan of x has a period of pi, then the tan of 2 pi z over lambda has a period. So this is important. So I keep saying that if you were to measure the impedance on a transmission line at two different points, they're not going to be equal to each other unless you measure, unless the distance between um, the two points is a special value, and that special value is lambda over 2, so half a, a wavelength. Um, so there's some special kind of uh, fractions of wavelengths when it comes to RF engineering. Uh, one of them is half a wavelength. The other one is a quarter of a wavelength. But we'll talk about that later. So just remember that the period of uh, this expression for the impedance um, is lambda over 2.